morning, everyone. It's Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue. Um, I know that I promised you some Easter crafts this week, and I still plan on doing those. But I also received in the mail some brand new products from uh, Cricut. There's my dog saying hello, good morning to you. <laughs> um, but I got these great deluxe paper, which is adhesive backed. And I wanted to show you how to play with them, or at least an idea on how to play with them. This is a, a product that was launched with Cricut Joy. Um, and it is adhesive backed paper but it's really a beautiful nice paper um, it comes in strips this is a four and a half inches wide by 12 inches this one here is natalie milan called in the grove and what you get in in this um package is 10 sheets of coordinating paper um, and they're adhesive back. So they're perfect for like stickers and different things, but they're paper. So you couldn't use it like you would um, vinyl, like on your car or something like a, or whatever. But I thought, you know, these make really beautiful stickers. So I started thinking about monograms and people really do love monograms. So I started playing around with them yesterday and, um, and I came up with, first I came up with one project, and then I started thinking this morning, you know, they're all different kinds of monograms, but this is what I came up with for my first go. Um, and these, this paper is the uh, Anna Griffin paper. So Anna Griffin rose paper. And actually it's two layered. Good morning, Dawn. Good morning, Lori Jo. Welcome. Hello, nice to see you. Um, so I started playing around with these monograms and um, and, I, and I came up with this one. It's just a scalloped edge and then with a letter inside. And then what I did was I layered it. I took um, this one here and cut it out with the with the letter cut out and then I put in the background, I don't know if you can see that, but it's like a, a very pale pink and I did that layered and I thought that was kind of fun. And what was cool is that I also got, after I peeled these off, I also got these bonus, um, bonus letters, you know, from where the cutouts were. So I wanted to show you um, how this cuts on the joy today. But I also wanted to show you maybe, you know, maybe this isn't your style. Maybe Anna is not your style. Maybe you want a different kind of a letter or you want to um, do maybe a cursive letter. So I wanted to show you how I came about with this, with this idea and then I'll show you how it cuts out, okay? So we're going to de design space. And I'm on my laptop today, and I'm going to show you the joy how it cuts out later. So I'm going to move it over a little bit so I can show you this. So um, I know because I've been a Cricut fan for a long time, I know that there's there are a couple of image sets that have these very basic, like sort of edgy, um, when I say edgy, like they have really pretty edges to them. Um, and so I thought, okay, I'll start there. And just so you can see where I found them, I went to images here, I'm gonna go there. And I went under image sets now this has changed slightly okay so um so when if you've done the update this is what you should see now it's 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 a little different than what i've been showing you all along but that's okay all that information is there still but it's just in a less um graphic laden version okay um so if you wanted to browse all images you can still do that 
this way and search that way. Um, or if you wanted to do, as I've been showing you, the cat cartridges. Remember I used to call those, we used to call those cartridges because they were these little um, things you'd put in the machine and um, they contained a bunch of images. Well, they've, they've sort of changed it to be called image sets which is more in keeping because they don't do the cartridges anymore, but it's a change. So people, you know, um, have a little bit of a hard time with change. So I understand that. Um, so we're gonna go to image sets. And when you go to image sets, it's the same thing as when you used to go to cartridges. So you have, um, and believe it or not, there's over 3,000, there's actually 3,191 image sets, which is, outrageously awesome um, <laughs> and so it it can be the kind of thing where you could scroll through here to look for your image set um, or if you have one that you know um, it, it you know the word or you know if you want to for instance we want to do Anna all Anna Griffin ones you can just type in Anna and it will show up all of Anna Griffin's ones here you know, which is really kind of cool. So in this particular case, I was thinking, I know there's one called, um, that has edge. I think it's edge in the, um, in the title. Yes. So it's called elegant edges. It's an old one, but a good oldie, but goodie. It's called elegant edges. So I clicked through here and I saw all these, basically they're frames. Um, and they have all these really fun um, edges. So I'm gonna select a couple of these just to show you, and we're gonna pull it into Design Space. Let me, um, let me hide these so that way you can see what I'm doing. Let's hide those, hide. Sorry, my laptop's a bit slow. Okay, so so here are these two. Let's hide this one as well. Here are two that, that I liked, and they come in at about three inches squared, um, which is, you know, kind of fun. Um, I think that's a good size. I think that's about what these are, but you know, you can change the size to whatever you want. Now these are layered. So in this particular case, I believe that there um, there's at least two layers over here. If you look on the right hand side, you'll see that it has one, two, three layers. One of them is hidden but there is, it's layered. So if you want to just start with one, um, the one layer, which is what I wanna do, I'm going to ungroup them and I'm going to take it apart, see? And I'm going to get rid of two of these layers because I really only need one. And the same thing for this one, it has three layers. I'm gonna ungroup it and I am going to get rid of this one here. All right, let's see if I, I need to get rid of this one as well. Okay, so now I have my little frames and I have to go in search of um, monograms or letters uh, that I want to use. So I do that by choosing text and uh, that is over here. There's a big T here. So I'm gonna choose t the T for text. And you'll see at the bottom comes up a little like text box, okay? So you can do this either way. Like you can start off with your letter, um, whatever letter you wanna choose. So I'm choosing R for Rita, um, but you can choose whatever you want, obviously. And then, um, then you can go up to font, which is up here, okay? And um, the way that I did this is that I did a search First of all, I did only Cricut um, fonts, which up here you can choose as Cricut. Or you, if you have, for instance, ones that you downloaded to your system, you can do all or just the system fonts. And then I filtered it by choosing single layer, which is right here, single layer. Single layer for this particular application is important because we're going to be slicing those um, those letters onto our frames, okay? So once we choose single layer, we can go through here and choose whatever type of letter we want. 
can do this and I'm going to make it slightly bigger so you can see what I'm doing here but um, let's and if we wanted to just kind of play around and add letters any way we'd like um, the simpler the better but if you like like for instance a, a very pretty script or um, Let's see, if you wanted more of a block letter, there's all kinds of block letters you could choose from, like here. So I kind of like what we had before, which was that um, that script. I'm trying to remember which one I chose. That's the hard part about working with fonts is that you have to remember which one you chose. Let's choose, uh, let's see. Something that's scripty. Um, is it this one? No, that's a writing font. So um, the writing font, remember, uh, I think it was this one. Yeah, it is. Okay. So, so we have our R and you see I can make it bigger, larger, you know, bigger, smaller, whatever. And I'm going to move it up into the, um, the area of my frame and I'm going to kind of uh, position it and sort of eyeball it. I want it to be within the frame, but not too close to the edges. So when it cuts out, we make sure we maintain that, um, that entire, uh, you know, the cutout without it ripping through the edges. So you can make it smaller or larger, whatever you want to do. You can center it and keep going back to it wherever you want to sort of put it, right? I think it needs to be a little tiny bit smaller for my tastes. And again, this is all your personal preference. And then when you get it exactly where you want it to be, you're going to select both the frame and the letter or the, you know, the monogram. Um, you're going to select that by using your mouse or if you're on your iPad, you can use your finger to select the entire two pieces, okay? That's what's important is that both of them are selected. And then you're going to slice. Remember I showed you how to slice yesterday? That's over here on the bottom. It says slice. Now the important thing to remember about slice is that it can only slice um, single images. So if you have a very complicated image, one that has more than one layer to it, um, it will not be able to slice that. Okay. This also holds true for images that say are, um, that have things like scoring on it because it's complicated. Okay. So, so what we're going to do is, um, we have two images here that are, they're single layered. We, we select them both and then we're going to choose slice. And then what we're going to do is sort of peel away all the layers. Remember slicing is sort of like, um, it's like if you took a hole punch and you slice through and you get basically you end up with three layers and so in this case we get our um the original r and then we have this part that was cut out out of the frame and then this is what we want to keep so we're going to get rid of these um, and this is the same technique. It's a B that I kind of liked on a scalloped edge. So again, I'm just going it they're two very simple images and we're going to select them both. Whoops. Hey. <laughs> okay, here we go. I think mm, maybe a little bit. Yeah, there that looks good. Select them both and do slice. And then we can pull off the parts that we don't want. And there you go. Um, and then that's all that I did here for these other ones. Uh, let's hide this one. So all that I did here for these other ones, just so you can kind of see what I made and all the different choices that you can um, do. Let's see, are these? So here's one with like kind of a, a bubbly N and this one with this beautiful S. And this one with this kind of modern tea 
and this really pretty scripted W. Um, all of these were created the exact same, same way. Now these are slightly different than the ones that I did here only because I did two layers and all I did here was um, I duplicated, so let's just work on this one here, move these guys over. So I wanted to do two layers. I wanted to use two coordinating colors here. So what I did was I took and I duplicated that B, right? And then I used the contour feature, which is down here on the right-hand side, contour. So I hit contour. And what I'm going to do with contour is I'm going to get rid of the B. So basically I reversed what I did before, okay? And I'm gonna change the color. And so that way you can kind of see, I'm gonna arrange it so that it goes to the back. And then you can kind of see, oh, okay. So now you have a two layer monogram, uh, one that is, is this, the top layer, and then this one, the bottom layer. You don't have to do that, but for instance, if you were gonna be putting this on a dark color and you don't wanna see that background, you want a lighter color, this is a, is a fun technique for that, okay? Hi, Penny from Mount Airy, Maryland. Welcome. We see Dawn and Danielle. Hi, Danielle. Um, so let's show you how these, uh, these, this two layer monogram work. We'll do it with our B. Okay. And I think we'll try, look at this pretty stuff. It is called Always Spring by J Good Designs. Let's have a look at those, see what they are. Now these are, um, these are, this deluxe paper with the adhesive back is, um, is a Cricut Joy product, but it's not a smart product. And remember the difference between a smart product and a um, and just like a plain old product is simply the mat. So a smart product um, does not need a mat, and a regular product, just a not smart product, needs um, a mat. So we do have to put these on a mat. Isn't that pretty? This one's called Always Spring. And I thought we would do that B in that. And oh, I don't know. Let's see. We could try. I kind of like these two together. I think that would be kind of fun. So let's do that. So we get two two sheets of each of these in this package. And we're going to, I'm going to just kind of um, group these. And, and uh, if you ever get to a place where you don't want to, cut everything if you group it all together and then you just hide it and it's an easy way so you don't have to delete anything from your from your um from your uh canvas okay so we're gonna make this on the joy and we are going to choose here we have to choose on a mat and here we go and i think i want to make two of these just simply because it's fun. And um, so to do that, you'll notice that it comes up as individual on each individual mat. Now, um, that's not good for us because we have 12 inch paper, right? Ooh, we've got, hi Mary Lou from Newfoundland. That's the way I pronounce it, Newfoundland. I don't know if that's correct or Newfoundland. But um, okay, she's from Newfoundland, Canada. So we have it on the mat, but we have 12 inch sheets of paper. So we're going to change the material size here from six and a half inches to 12. And what you'll see is, oops, there are our um, two things on one sheet. Now we have to do that for both uh, both of these colors. You can't, it doesn't do it automatically for, 
for all of them. And that's just simply because in, you know, sometimes you have smaller pieces of, of material, whatever. Now also just to point out here, one of the things that you can do is to save paper if you want, you can, you can click on these images and sort of move them around so that they'll save a little paper. And this comes in just a little over the six inches. So I'll have half a sheet of paper there. And um, the same thing I can do here. That's just kind of a frugal thing that I do. And then I'm going to hit continue. And I have to choose my material. And as I mentioned, this is called deluxe paper adhesive back. So it's right here. Now, people have asked me if you can use these in other machines, and I do not have a great answer. I don't know um, is my answer. My, oh, it goes to the French, Danielle. <laughs> automatically goes to the French. Um, yeah, I have that with Spanish. My Spanish doesn't come out very well with that, so... Um, so anyway, I don't know, I'm sure somebody's going to try. And if you've tried, come back and tell us you've tried. Maybe later on, I'll be able to, um, to try it out in my maker, um, when I'm working on my Easter projects for later today. So, um, okay, so I chose deluxe paper adhesive back and I can see it's a little out of range. So I'm going to move this back and bring my joy here so that you guys can see it. But you see it's blinking and that means it's ready to accept the mat, right? So we're going to open it up. I just wanna make sure it's in, in view. So I was thinking that this would be good for underneath because it's a smaller print. I do use it, Danielle, but um, I, use, I use this Joy far more lately. Actually, I've been using my sewing machine a lot lately, so I'm, I'm kind of like all over the house. I've got my sewing machine in my dining room. I've got my, um, I've got my maker in the front room where it's my all of my materials and stuff. And then here I am in the kitchen with my joy. So I've basically taken over the entire house um, with crafting, which is the way it should be, don't you think? <laughs> What's great? I don't have a husband. <laughs> I don't have a husband. Uh, you do too? Yeah, I don't have a husband to tell me, you can't take over all this space so I can just kind of just do whatever I want. It's my house. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> so, um, and you see that it's cutting. It's, it's a really fast thing. Um, and so we're going to cut both of those. We're cutting the bottom and the top. And it's actually done with the top one. So we're going to unload it. Let's take it off of the mat. All right. And put the second one on top. Make sure it's on there real good. I want to show you the back of this deluxe paper so that you can see. Let me just get this one going. Okay, so here's the back of it. Deluxe paper, it says right on there and it has all the grids there, very similar to the Smart paper, so smart whatever, you know, there's like smart label, smart iron-on, smart that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I don't mean to tempt you, I just want to show you all the possibilities, so, but I mean, I think, you know, if people will try different things. That's the great thing about crafters, isn't it? Um, is that they always try and sort of go, what if I did this? Right? What if I tried this? I always did that when I was making um, soap and herbal. What if I put this here? You know, as long as you follow some of the rules, um, you know, you don't mix the wrong ingredients, but you could sort of get kind of fun and funky with with the, your choices and stuff. So that's what I love about crafting, is that it's sort of up to you. All right, so... Our second sheet is done. I'm gonna move the 
joy over so you can see what I'm doing. Excuse me. Let's go over here. Okay. So I cut this because I want to keep this, you know. Yeah, take it outside to craft. We don't have that warm weather yet. I mean, it's starting, but it's still going to chill to it. Uh, but we're in New England, so that's how New England is, you know. So anyway, um, so I cut out uh, and I used half of this sheet. So I can still, I don't want to waste paper. So I'm going to cut here below that second one and save that sheet because it's real pretty. And we could probably use it for some sort of embellishment or something later on. And then this, um, this just, here we go. This just peels away. It's a sticker, you see peels away like this. And then we also would take out our monogram. We're gonna leave those those um, little pieces, the inside of the letter. We're gonna take that off like this, okay? Um, and then so we have two of those. I'm gonna cut them in half just so that we can be working with one at a time. So we're gonna layer these. And um, so let me just move the camera just ever so slightly. So, um, and this does require you to be a little um, careful and working sort of uh, right over the, right over the, uh, the project. And what I'm doing is I am simply matching up the scallops, you see? before I push it down because it is adhesive. There we go. And then I'm gonna take these little parts of the letter and put them in there. And you're gonna do it better than I am because uh, you know, you are not working with a time constraint or on a camera, but Line them up the best you can, and then there you go. And then when you take it off, there's no empty space here. So that way you're able to um, both see that second layer, but also if you were going to put it on something like black and you didn't want to see, or even silver, you didn't want to see that on the background poking through, there you go. And it's it's all one piece and it's sticky, really sticky. And it's very thick because it's two um, layers, okay? I'm gonna put it back here and just show you again how I did this. So there's the background one. And then we're gonna take off this one that has the letter cut out from it and we're just going to line it up. There we go. Line it up and then we're gonna take these little pieces. Line it up. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I think that's good. And that's how you make a two-layered monogram. Um, I did the same thing here. I did two-letter monogram with deluxe paper. That is a Cricut Joy product, but again, probably could be used in your maker um, or your Explore machine. Let's see. And I just want to show you again what these look like they come i think there's about seven or eight different packs this one here is the anna griffin pack oh dogs see something i don't know the anna griffin pack and it has this beautiful i just love her stuff but it's got some real nice images there and then this one is that natalie milan which is that um in the grove Oh, look at that yellow. Oh, very nice. Oh, the lemon, so cute. So I'm sure you can probably come up with um, a lot of different applications for this product. 
Um, this one here is called Nature Walk. It's also Natalie Milan. Um, it's a little more geometric. Oh, that's so pretty. Some nice lavender colors. She really likes those bugs. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. She really likes bugs. I don't, I'm not a big bug fan, but, and then this last one, which is the one that we cut from today, which is called always spring and you get 10 sheets that are four and a half inches wide by 12 inches so you get five different um five different patterns and they are uh two of each right so there you go so that is deluxe paper adhesive back deluxe paper there are if you go onto the cricut website you'll see that there are a few more I'm sure they'll add more as time goes on. Um, and I'm not really sure, but I think I've seen some of these. I know I've seen some of the Anna ones, but I think I've seen some of the Natalie Milan ones that repeated in the iron-on and the vinyl. So it might be a nice way to do a mixed media thing if you were doing iron-on or the patterned vinyl and the deluxe paper. There's a difference between the paper and the vinyl and just so you know kind of can know this is this is paper. So if you're going to put this out side it will you know it will corrode it will peel off so this is something for an inside application uh, whereas vinyl would be for a more of an outside application so there's a there's the difference between adhesive back paper and vinyl okay so that's all about the adhesive back uh, deluxe paper for today. I just thought you'd want to know how to make these adorable monograms. I'm sure you're going to um, come up with other applications for this. I've seen a couple other projects, but I just got these in and I wanted to show you them. And later on today, I'm going to be coming back with an Easter craft, but I just wanted to pop in this morning and show you these really fun new um, deluxe paper samplers that I got in the mail. So um, thanks so much for coming today. I hope you come back later on today when we do our Easter craft. I haven't decided what the craft's going to be yet. I'm thinking it's going to be a card, um, but I haven't decided which card. Um, I know I have a beautiful lattice card to show you, but I also have some really fun box cards, ones that we looked at earlier in the week from SVG cuts and then some also from from Lori Whitlock she makes really fun um, box cards oh thanks Danielle so that that's it for for to this morning for this morning but not it for the day so I hope you all have a pleasant morning and we'll see you again a little later on in the day and uh, keep your chin up and, and keep you know keep keep going along, doing your thing, keep yourself busy, hands busy, um, and, and we'll see you all again really soon. Okay, have a good morning.